Hi guys, this is teacher Ricardo. And this is going to be the video for Wednesday, June 17th. And uh, this is for second grade. And the thing that we're going to do today, it's, uh, let me switch the screen right here. This is a story and it's called the island. And as you can see, we have many different paragraphs. So the information that you guys are going to be looking for is this one right here. Why does Melissa feel isolated and lonely? Okay, I recommend you guys to um, write it down because I'm going to play the uh, audio for this uh, lecture. And therefore you can be getting all the answers while the uh, audio is playing. So please write it down, grab a pencil or pen and a piece of paper or your uh, notebook and write these questions. The first one, like I told you, why does Melissa feel isolated and lonely? Number two, why didn't Sari and Alice come to the house on the island? Number three, what uh, frightened Melissa during the night? Why couldn't she sleep afterwards? Number four, what does Melissa learn about Andreas? Number five, how does Andreas change her understanding of the island? Number six and last one, how does she feel after the phone call with Sari and why? Okay, this is the information that we are looking for. Now we are going to be listening to the audio. So please pay attention. The Island by Martin Hobbs It was an isolated house on the west coast of a rocky island. From the terrace, she looked down on high cliffs, huge rocks like bones or skulls, and the bright blue waters of the bay. Difficult paths wound down the steep hillside through stones and trees and bushes to the water's edge. But there was no swimming today, or yesterday, or the day before. There was no wind, but the sea was too rough, and all the time she listened to the dull roar of the waves. Another day of empty wishes. I wish the sea were calm. I wish I could speak to somebody. My phone still isn't working. No coverage. I wish I could connect to the internet. Once again, I'm writing this blog just for myself. And you want to know another wish? I wish I hadn't come here on my own without Zadie and Alice. They're still stuck in London. A family crisis. They said they'd get here if they can. But when? I've never been on my own before. It's weird. Too weird. Have you ever felt like you were cut off from the rest of the world? Okay, there are people in some other houses, and there's a small town an hour away by bus, so at least I won't starve to death. But I can hardly understand a word the people say. It's like being on a desert island. I have never been so bored. It's beautiful, but the beauty is beginning to get me down. What can I see? Trees, rocks, waves, an old abandoned tower or something. I've got another two weeks here. If Z and A don't come soon, I think I'll go out of my mind. I woke up scared stiff. There was a bird screeching outside. Then I heard noises in the bushes, like something was digging a huge hole. And this thing sounded big. I looked out but couldn't see anything except for the moon and stars and then I heard the whine of a mosquito and that was the end of my night's so-called sleep. I was sitting on a rock watching the waves, what else could I do, when a small fishing boat came in. There was an old man in it, brown, 
brown, wrinkled, white-haired, wiry. And somehow, he brought the boat to shore on his own. And then I had my first real conversation here. The old man spoke English. He told me he had been born in the old lighthouse. That's what I thought was a tower. This man, his name's Andreas, can tell amazing stories. He said there were once terraces all the way down the hillsides. The local people grew vines and vegetables and fruit trees. In fact, they grew stuff on every available surface. But now the terraces are all gone, fallen into ruin. All the young people had left for the mainland, and the old people had died. But not me, he laughed. It's two days later. I met Andreas again. He said when his father was the lighthouse keeper, and he was a small boy, there was a terrible fog. It lasted a week. And every night, they heard a mysterious sound. It was loud and long and sad, like an animal in pain. And then, on the last night, a beam of light from the lighthouse shone down into the bay, this bay, and they saw it. They saw a sea monster crashing about in the water. It's true, he said. These things happened in the old days. Look at the rocks, all these smashed and broken rocks. They were broken by the sea monster. He also explained about the strange noises I had heard the other night. There are wild boars on the island, the same wild animal that killed Adonis. I think that's who he said. I'll Google him when I'm home. Over the coming days, Andreas told her many different stories. It seemed that every stone and tree and ruin had its own tale to tell. There was the house where his sister gave birth to triplets. There was the little chapel where his parents and grandparents and great-grandparents had got married. There was the poet's tree and the witch's hut and the pirate's cave. When Melissa explored the bay now, the stones and trees seemed to talk to her. It was strange, but although she was still on her own, she didn't feel lonely. The island was full of voices. She hears the tinkling of bells and soft voices and laughter. Where are they coming from? She walked down through the olive trees and saw a procession winding up the hillside, the sea glittering below. There were girls dressed in white robes and boys in brightly colored costumes. The girls held olive branches and the boys carried baskets of fruit. At the head of the procession was a man he looked like Andreas, but years younger, and he was leading a white bull by a rope. And the bull was crowned with flowers. The young man smiled at her and encouraged her to join them. They were heading to a party, a feast, a celebration. She stepped towards them. Melissa woke up with a start to a burst of electronic music. She sat up in bed and stared in confusion into the dark. She was in her bedroom, and it was her phone. Somehow, it had picked up a signal. She heard a familiar voice. It was Zadie. The conversation was short and often difficult to make out. Zadie said that they couldn't make it. The situation in London was too complicated. Would Melissa be all right if they didn't come? Melissa smiled. Everything would be just fine. Okay, you have heard the uh, the lecture, the reading, which is called the island. Okay, now we need to go back to the uh, questions, and you need to answer them because I'm going to check for uh, your work next Wednesday. Okay, so this is going to be like your homework. So please do it. And see you guys next Wednesday. And take care, be safe, wash your hands, don't touch your face, and be careful.
Thank you, guys.